Hello. Welcome to the TV room. David Bradley here. Well, things happen. And of course, what generally happens here is clutter. Now, I cannot say that a beautiful Commodore 64 is ever clutter. But I am, you know, I have been working on issues of clutter. And I'm not over them yet. I am not. Um, anyway, as you may know, I recently did get some stuff that was related to Commodore 64. And I really haven't had a chance to check it out. It was part of <coughs> an ingenious device that this fellow made long ago that allowed wait staff to send drink orders to the bartender. And here is something you will have not seen and you will probably never see again. This goes into the user port. And here are the little controllers, which that is not going over. That's kind of spinning. Got little miniature keypads, and they're they got kind of phone cords, which is a good thing because they stretch. But also, if something goes wrong, they're easy to replace. Now, this is all part of the system that he made, and I showed in another video. Some of what he had done in it, <coughs> there were extra wires merged into the um, the keyboard. And so I basically extended the keyboard. Here is something that I will test, but I don't need right here, right now. It's a serial cable. I put it over there to be tested. What do we have here? Aha! Wait for it. It's another serial cable. I'm sure it's fine, but I will put it over there so that I can test it. Aha! And here -da -da, is a monitor cable. Now, this one, the monitor that was attached to this system was a monochrome monitor. Also, one of the 64s is an original. So this monitor cable is a 5-pin and um, I'm, I'm assuming it has one video and one audio output, I'm assuming. And this too will need to be tested, but not at this moment. It's funny, you know, I think back to when I first got a 64. <coughs> and I'm not saying that the man who was at the TPUG meeting at Commodore was lying, but I believe he was. Because I had an original 64, which I still have. And... Um, he was trying to tell me how the video was much better on the, the, the 64 that had the um, the 8-pin connector rather than the 5-pin. Speaking of which, there's another 5-pin video connector. I will put this over here to test. Um, and that was all crap. That was all crap. Crap, 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 crap. They changed the connector because from what I heard long after that is... People were accidentally sticking, I think, the power connector in the video connector. And that will do nothing good in a hurry. Nothing good. All right, so here, this is a typical line cord, which would go with a 1541. And once again, I will test it. But not right here. So we're getting down to, okay, now this, this I will test these magical things when I load up the program. And there are other parts of this that I don't have. And I'm going to see if I can get to see if I can sort of recreate his, his bar system. If nothing else, just to show people. Wow, look at this cool thing. I don't know if anyone would really want to do such a thing now. I doubt it. Okay, now we're down to 
not one, but two Commodore 64 power supplies. Now, one of them I know I saw working because when I was there to see the machine, he had it all plugged in. It was all dandy. It was all lovely. The other one I have not seen working. So, as always with cables, things get tangled. So I'm going to get them separated. My gut tells me this is the one that he was using, and this is the one that had been sitting around for a while. So, how do we test this? Well, you know, for years I've been perplexed by this. <clears throat> because if you go trying to stick little probes into that connector, I'm sure it won't be long somehow before you short something out. And that would not be good. So, I don't have a way to test the 9 volt side. Except I've never had it cause any tremendous troubles. I've had it go bad, but it's never caused damage. But the 5 volt side caused it. So, a while back, Rudy of Rudy's Retro Intel made me this one of a kind thing. Look, it says Commodore in the back and has a little meter on the front. And you've probably seen this if you've seen what I've been doing before. And you plug the power supply in. Aha! And it gives you a reading very quick. So, this one seems to be quite fine 5.13 volts. And life is good. And I'm, as I say, I'm pretty sure this is the one that he showed me the machine working on. I'm pretty sure. So, now I could leave it plugged in longer. And I will at some point to see if anything happens when it heats up. And this is the other one that I have not seen in action. Nor would I encourage anybody to, you know, just plug something in that they don't know about. And we will see. Well, okay. So this one is reading 5.15 volts, which also seems quite acceptable. So, they have passed the initial testing stages, these two power supplies. The next thing that needs to be done, and not at this instant, <coughs> is to plug these in to a computer, turn it on, and see if it comes up, which typically means the 9-volt side is okay. What I find is if it doesn't come up, you see funny wavy things, and you hear a funny buzz, and then you know it's time to cut the cables off. <coughs> but I recently had another one, and I still don't know exactly what was what with it, in that it kind of it worked, but then it didn't when I had the diagnostic thing plugged in. I was like, boy, this is weird. So I think the 5 volt was fine, but I think there was something subtle on the 9 volt side that wasn't. So I haven't cut it yet. I may send it to the people who make the diagnostic thing. I'll probably see them at the World of Commodore. Oh, what's the World of Commodore, you say? Well, it's a show that is coming up November 30th and December 1st at the Admiral Inn. Go to tpug.ca for all the information. And anyway, here is the top of the Commodore 64, which was used for this wonderful um, bar thing. And you know what? The rest of the keyboard isn't here because it's not needed. Because with all this, all the wiring and stuff that's been done here, the keypad and everything else handled everything. It did. And you didn't have to load anything or do anything because it had, oh, I can't remember the name of the cartridge. It had a cartridge that would just start everything up. Now, I think he's had trouble with that, but I haven't, I haven't checked it. And it's actually, uh, it shouldn't be downstairs in the kitchen, but it is. And here, here is a very early Commodore 64. Isn't it lovely? You can tell by the great big video cover shield thing. And it doesn't have... Oh. Well, once again, let me just check this. It has... Oh, so the board's not very tight in there. I haven't plugged this one in. 
Or maybe it was the one he showed. I, I'm, I've lost track now. 213902, made in Canada. That is not a particularly low serial number. But with all that's gone on, it could be that the bottom got switched. Serial number 109979, made in Canada. Maybe, anyway. Another lovely, 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 lovely 64. So, by the way, speaking of clutter, because, of course, I am, of course, once again, starting to suffer from clutter, um, I worked with a great vice principal years ago, um, and she had a great expression, let us close the deal. In other words, when I get started on something, I've really got to just carry on, get it done, move it off the table, move on to the next thing. <coughs> but that is not always what happens. I get distracted. And then something else comes along. Here is something that a few people might have. Now, don't call this number because it's not anymore. But long ago, this was a button from the bulletin board system that my brother and I started while we were students at Northern Secondary School some more than 40 years ago. It ran in the library, and the library people used it to keep in touch with other libraries. Um, and um, it was quite something. Anyway, we got the buttons made. And thought, you know, maybe people will want these and they'll buy them better anyway. We should have got maybe like some sort of a pet thing on it or something. Anyway, so I don't know how many. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. I'm on here. I don't know how many are around or how many there are. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, but anyway. I'm going to, I think, put together a different hat for the world of Commodore. Yes, the world of Commodore. You may have heard about this. And I'll gather some old things, including that. Like, the hat that I wore years ago is like a baseball cap. But I think I will, I will do something different for the world of Commodore. And as much as it is, um, I like having the original hat altogether. I think I will take artistic license and do something different, I believe. So here I have two original pets and they're sort of in process. And I, as I say, I've got to close the deal, stick with what I'm doing, get her done, move on, instead of being just distracted by the new thing. That's what I gotta do. Anyway, these power supplies are up and working. I suppose, you know, I mean, I don't want to abandon everything that I'm doing here. But I suppose what I should do is get a monitor up here and test the power supplies on the 64 and run the diagnostics on the 64 so at least I know where I'm at. But then really stick with, like basically I've got the keyboard. Yeah, here. I have this little keyboard from a chiclet pet. Ta -da! And I've got it all cleaned. And if you've been watching, you know this. But there's a wire that has come off. That little gray wire that is not attached. So one whole row is not working. And I can see where it should be because there's nothing there. At least I think I can. Oh, damn it. There we go. It should be right there, I think. Anyway, this, this also looks like it had some work. Anyway, I need to get that done. I've got a 64 that keeps telling me it needs a 6526 chip. I've got these things here, and i got to see about the data set. And i got to put the right boards back in and see what's happening. And then I want to do more experimentation with the pet companion 
using these old pets. So anyway, what I really need to do is start something and as best as possible, like if, if really there's something that I can't go forward with, get it out of here, move it away, move on to the next thing with a, yes, a clean slate. Can you imagine? Wouldn't that be lovely? Anyway, I think at this moment, though, I will... Oh, there are some Q-tips. Well, sorry, they're not Q-tips. They are plastic stick cotton swabs that I got at Dollarama. Why? Because they're a whole lot cheaper than what I would get at Chopper's Drug Mart, and they work just fine. <coughs> and here's Deoxit, a magical thing. The thing I found about Deoxit when I was working on these pet things is I mean, it's great with dealing with micro-corrosion, if there is micro-corrosion going on. But it also, it sure made the chips a lot easier to get back into the board. And, you know, you, it, it's horrible if you ruin a socket trying to get a chip in. Anyway, so this does need to stay here. It does. And then I have some little bags. Oh, look. Ah, here's a little bag. This is for the pet companion. You know what I should do? Just while we're here, I should go. Oh, I should get the pet companion because there were things on here and I didn't know what they were. And then I asked Ruby of Ruby's Retro Info, what are those things? This thing. And you know what it is, and it's quite brilliant. Never would have thought of this. It's little legs. Hold on, I'll show you. Little legs. that are included with the pet companion so it doesn't have strain when it's sitting, sticking out of the computer. And there's two holes that go with it. There's a little leg. Magical. And I hadn't, I probably think, what is that thing? But now I know. And so, I will put it on because I will be doing more um, testing of things using the Pet Companion. And um, if you are interested in a Pet Companion, from what I know, Rudy of Rudy's Retro Intel has eight left. Uh, um, if you want to make one, the instructions and such are on, what's he called, his GitHub page. And, you know, if you want to get it done, you can get it done. But if you want one... Uh-oh, I'm having a little trouble. Uh-oh, what have I done? Oh, the connector here. At the back end. It's a little bit in the way. Oh, no. Anyway, I'll keep screwing this in. I'm sure it will sort itself out. There. The pet companion has legs. And if you're not sure what the pet companion is, it is indeed a magical device that gives you audio and video of a composite sort out of a pet. Which basically it's CB2 sound. And then there's also another adapter here to do um, HDMI things. It looks like a joystick connector, but I think there's some other interface required. But it's all, it's all very well marked, and I would like to say this is the Bradley adaptation. Um, I was talking to him one time, and he was talking about, you know, having the sound out thing, and I said, well, you know, what if somebody wants to just put on headphones? And he's like, oh, I have to put a whole other thing. I said, you know, I bet you, for cheaper than redesigning the board, and putting on another thing that has a headphone jack kind of thing, you probably get something like an adapter and just stick it in there. And there it is. So that, that is a sound thing that changes if you have headphones. It does. So it can go in there. Beautiful. And here is Rudy's card. It is Rudy's Retro Intel on YouTube. Anyway, I'm going to do more experiments. 
with this and now it's all outfitted and uh, anyway so yes my <coughs> part of my clutter problem is I need to close the deal get something figure something if I get to where I can't do anything else move it out set it somewhere else clear the slate start on something new Sounds simple. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, that is enough for now. I think the batteries in this are perhaps dying a little bit. Anyway, I, um, I will figure out what my next step is here. I shall. I think, even though... I've just said that whole thing about stick to one thing, close the deal, and all that. I think I've just got to check out these 64s that I just got. And that means the diagnostics and getting a monitor up here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, which I have a monitor just right down here, right down here on the floor. So it's no big thing. It's just, I guess I'll stick to one thing, but I'll work backwards. Because I do definitely need to do some desoldering on this keyboard. And, um, I've got to explore the data set in here. I've got to get the right boards back into the right machines. And I've got a six, as I say, 64 with a 6526 chip. That even though I don't know what's wrong with it, both diagnostic things, both the one, the old Commodore one I have and the one from RetroRewind.ca, both say it's bad. Um, and then I have a, a, a disk drive over there, which you can probably see behind me. They're stacked up. Um, that after changing some chips and other such things, um, it's now down to saying it needs RAM. So I've got to stick with these things and get them done. Meanwhile, oh, there's a lovely fellow. He he handed off a couple of 1571s to me, like, last year about this time. And I really, I was working on them. And then I popped a trace, and it just, it's one of those things where I was like, oh, and I got paralyzed, and I stopped. But I would like to think that somehow or another I can give them back to him at this World of Commodore. And if that means I get them fixed, great. If it doesn't, maybe what I'll do is I'll I'll find my other 1571s and steal the boards out and put them in and say, well, I'm, I'll keep working on the other ones so at least he can carry on and get going with his thing. And then I'll, I'll keep the fixed ones or the ones that I eventually fix, <coughs> I think. Anyway, lots to do. And I have to start by... Closing the deal, one step at a time. So, thanks for coming. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.